Robert Mbui. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity to also contribute to this debate. Mr. Speaker, two things come to mind on this issue of um, our debt strategy. First, I think we must be very, very careful as members of parliament what, before we vote what exactly we are voting for. Because this is the beginning of the budget cycle, and if we don't, if we are not uh, clear about what is happening, we may just agree to things and later on we start complaining. So we must note as members, this is the beginning of the budget cycle, the debt strategy is part of it, and we must be careful what we vote for. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, we also must be careful as politicians what we say, even when it is during campaign time. Because, Mr. Speaker, there are things that we have to do eventually, and sometimes it is very, very um, humiliating and humbling for people to eat humble, humble, uh, you know, humble pie. Because, Mr. Speaker, uh, you note that uh, when we passed the last uh, um, uh, finance bill, there are some parts of that finance bill that later on members who had accepted them went out there and started complaining publicly. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, when you look at this, uh, this, uh, this, this strategy, it actually, passing this enables and allows the government of Kenya Kwanzaa to borrow more. And you must remember the promises that were made during the campaign trail. We were told that uh, borrowing, in fact, they demonized the previous uh, head of state and uh, apparently borrowing was supposedly a very bad thing. And now we are continuing to borrow. We are planning to borrow. We are setting up ourselves to borrow some more money. Mr. Speaker, it is, in fact, I can say that... Um, this regime might, can teach a lot to the previous regime on borrowing because they are now going further into uh, using other marketing instruments like green and blue bonds, samurai bonds, panda bonds, sukuk, sukuk bonds, among others. So basically, there is a better and more, more intention of borrowing from this strategy. But Mr. Speaker, borrowing is not necessarily a bad thing because even in our own investments, we borrow so that we can do good things with that money. What matters is what exactly do you use the money for? Exactly how do you spend that money? If you borrow and put up an investment that returns, it gives you good returns, then it's a good investment. But Mr. Speaker, if you borrow and consume and use that money for normal day-to-day -day operations, then that becomes a problem. Mr. Speaker, it's also a problem, uh, and this is what is happening. When you borrow to pay back loans, Mr. Speaker, it is not a good strategy to borrow so you can pay back loans. And unfortunately, I am seeing a tendency where the current borrowing is at a much higher cost than the previous borrowing. So you are borrowing so you can settle loans that were borrowed at lower interest rates and you are paying higher interest rates based on the plan that is there now. Mr. Speaker, we have to be careful about these things. But Mr. Speaker, I also think it's unfortunate that there is a lot of uh, borrowing from the local market. Mr. Speaker, one of the things that uh, the former president, the late president Kibaki did, is that he stopped borrowing from the local market. Mr. Speaker, immediately that happened, it opened up and stopped crowding out the private sector. So people with businesses were able to take loans from banks. In fact, before Kibaki, even opening accounts with some of these banks, uh, you know, some of these major banks, was almost impossible because the, the, even the minimum deposits were so high because they were dealing directly with the government. So, Mr. Speaker, it is actually something that we need to look at. Why allow ourselves, our government, to borrow from the local market and crowd out the private sector? Mr. Speaker, I also want to point out that uh, Treasury, Mr. Speaker, is not taking this house seriously. And, Mr. Speaker, you are aware that several times Treasury has told this house that they will release funds for GAF, for GCDF, and they didn't honor it, I think about four times. Mr. Speaker, I'm saying that because if you look at the policy resolutions, they actually confirm what I am saying. The policy resolution number five says that uh, within 30 days of the adoption of this report and subject to section 50 of the Public Finance Management Act, Treasury will submit a comprehensive report to the National Assembly on the breach of the debt anchor of 55% to GDP. Mr. Speaker, we are at about 70.8% to GDP. That means that when they gave an undertaking, they did not fulfill it. And now they are, we, we are giving them time to go and fulfill something they didn't fulfill when they had the opportunity. Mr. Speaker, again, um, in the last discussions on this uh, strategy, uh, medium-term debt strategy, we talked about Treasury opening a single account. 
Mr. Speaker, we are repeating ourselves. 12 months. Time is up. Joseph McClub. Not the um, Boko Milemba. Yes. You are on intervention. Oh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for this chance to, uh, to speak on this medium term uh, debt management strategy. Basically, uh, uh, the medium term debt manage, uh, management strategy and things to do with this were basically things of the IMF. And 